Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the fundamentals of control systems. Today we're going to be doing some examples on linear approximation of nonlinear systems. I'm Gus, and this is Endless Engineering, so hit that thumbs up button and let's dive right in. Okay, let's start out with a nice example of the inverted pendulum. Now, you might think that this is a somewhat of an academic example, but it has a lot of practical applications such as uh, the Segway, like stabilizing a Segway, uh, or landing a rocket vertically and stabilizing its um, angle when it comes down. Uh, so there's, there's many applications to the inverted pendulum. And granted, what we're going to look at is a simplified system, uh, but it's, it's very important and it gives us a nice example to show how we can linearly approximate it. So we have a mass here, M, connected to a string, and it's, or a rod, and it's uh, massless, you know, again, some uh, idealizations here. And there's this angle theta from the vertical, and there's a uh, gravity effect here. So we, the first thing acting on the mass here is mass times G, so the, 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 the weight, essentially. Uh, and so, so let's, let's say that the motion is positive clockwise, and let's write out the equation of motion for this. So we do that by writing the summation of moments uh, around this point here. Let's call that O. The summation of moments about O is going to be uh, mg the force times this distance here. So this distance here, let's call it x, right? So that's going to be mgx. Uh, now what is x? So there's a length here of this pendulum itself. Let's call it L. So L times the sine theta is what gives you this projection of X itself. So L sine theta, right? And this, uh, the summation of moment actually gives you the motion of theta double dot, right? So J theta double dot, because J is the moment of inertia of this uh, spinning mass or rotating mass, and theta double dot is the angular acceleration. Okay, so this is my equation that describes the motion of this system and you can see it's nonlinear. We have sine here. Sine is a nonlinear function. So the sine uh, looks something like this, you know, with theta. Starts from zero, right, and does something that looks like that. So this is zero. This is pi over two, negative pi over two, right, and this will be the amplitude, which in our case is dictated by mg, um, oh, sorry, this x is no longer x here. Uh, this x is equal to sine theta, so let's just say mg, oops, it's going to get messy. Let's say it's mg l sine theta, right? So that x, which is this distance here, is l sine theta. Okay, so let's rewrite this and say, let's make a substitution for theta double dot as y. Let's just call it y. So we can rewrite this equation as y is equal to mgl over j times sine theta. And now we apply the concepts that we talked about in an earlier video of how I can linearly approximate this system at some operating point. We do the Taylor series expansion. So I can approximate y using Taylor series expansion that says it's equal to y at some theta zero or theta naught, some point, uh, plus the first derivative of y with respect to theta times at theta zero times theta minus theta zero divided by one factorial. And then there's higher order terms, we're gonna drop them. We're just gonna take a first order expansion. So the derivative here, uh, dy d theta, is equal to what? So this is a constant, so it stays constant. MGL over J, right? Sine theta, derivative is cosine theta, right? And I didn't substitute theta naught here, so this is essentially theta naught, right? So this is at theta naught. And X minus, uh, theta, uh, so, sorry, theta minus theta zero is as is. So let's say that I'm gonna take theta naught equal to zero. So what do I get from this? The derivative at theta naught, sine of zero is one. So the derivative is mgl over j, right? And 
uh, y itself at zero is equal to zero because the sine of zero is zero. This is constant, so that's zero. So this term effectively goes away, right? And then this is zero. So then my approximation of y is uh, is zero plus the derivative, which is m g l over j, and then theta minus zero zero is zero. Uh, sorry, is theta. So that's my approximation. So you can see that I took the system here and I got this by applying the Taylor series expansion and now I effectively have a linear system. So this is effectively theta double dot, right? The acceleration of the pendulum. And if you, if you were to visualize this, so to speak, it would be this line here. It's not a great line, but it's a line that is basically around its operating point. And remember, when we linearly approximate a nonlinear function, the more we deviate from our operating point, the larger error that we incur in our approximation. And I can tell you that for an approximation like this, we can get up to about less than 10% error uh, going up to a theta equal to 40 degrees. And that's not bad, right? It's, it's around 8% error or 7% error for a theta uh, of 40 degrees or less, right? Of course, the smaller we go back to zero, um, the, the, there's no error at zero because we're approximating it at that point. And the reason I say this is this is a trade-off where we got a linear system, which are much easier, which are systems that are much easier to deal with and solve and Zen controllers for. And we designed it about this point where theta is zero, where for a lot of systems for an inverted pendulum, when you want to design a controller, you want to keep the system upright. And you don't want to deviate too much anyway. And we're getting an approximation of less than 10% error at 40 degrees, which is a lot. Like imagine if you were on a Segway and you were to lean back 40 degrees or lean forward 40 degrees, that wouldn't be comfortable for you at all. And it might not be stable at that point uh, with, with the total mass of the system. So... This is a pretty good approximation, and it's a trade-off, and we can use this to, you know, model the system at this point, and then learn some things about it, and in the future, hopefully, we'll design some controllers to allow us to control it. So let's take another example where we talk about a model for predicting population growth. So this is the logistic population growth model, where we have n as the population size, and r and k are some constants. So the differential equation is the time derivative of n is equal to rn times 1 minus n over k. This is clearly a nonlinear system because we have n times n, n squared, right? So how do we do this? Let's rewrite this as y is equal to rn minus r over k n squared, right? And we can approximate this, again, linear approximation, with the Taylor series expansion, which is y at n naught plus dy dn at n naught, uh, sorry, n minus n naught over 1 factorial. First order Taylor series approximation. So dy by dn, that's equal to r minus 2r over k n, right? And so this is at n naught, right? Uh, so this is just the derivative of this term, right? With respect to n, we get r. With respect to n here, we get 2r uh, over k n naught, right? So I need to substitute n naught. So what value do I pick, right? Previously, with the inverted pendulum example, we knew that the operating point would be around 0 for the angle, right? Here, we might not be quite so sure. One way to pick a point to linearize about is to look at the differential equation and pick the equilibrium point. And what the equilibrium point typically refers to is the area where the derivative is equal to zero. So nothing is changing. The system is at equilibrium. And where would that happen? Rn times 1 minus n over k. Right, that's the equation. So the only way that two things that are multiplied together would be zero is one of them has to be zero or both of them are zero. So if this term is zero, that means n naught is zero. If this term is zero, that means that n naught is equal to k. Right? 
So these are the two equilibrium points for this nonlinear system. We're not going to worry about how stable they are or anything like that. That's for a different day. We're just going to use those as our end naught to look at this uh, differential equation approximation or the system approximation in linear form. So let's go ahead and use uh, where n naught is equal to zero, right? So y at zero, which is this equation, this term goes away and this term goes away, so that's zero. So let's call this y approximated to n naught equals zero, right? That's approximation. This term goes to zero. Now the derivative with substituting zero, if I substitute zero here, this term goes away. I end up with r, and then n minus zero is n. So this equation is r times n. So that's my approximation about the equilibrium zero. And now for the point where n naught is equal to k, again another approximation at a different point. If we substitute uh, k here, what do we get for n? This is n squared, right? So y at k, what is that equal to? rk minus rk squared over k. So this term goes away and this term goes away, and then rk minus rk ends up to be zero. Interesting. And then we have the derivative. So dy over dn at n equals k. What is that going to be? r minus 2r over k times k. So this term goes away with this term. And what we're left with is minus r. Right? So our system approximation then, let me write that here. y uh, at n naught equal to k is approximated around the point of y of k, which is zero, nothing here, plus the derivative of uh, y with respect to n at k, which is minus r, times n minus k. Right, because n minus n naught. So this is the approximation of the system at the other equilibrium point. So you can see that these equations are not hugely different, right? Um, they're similar, but the signs are kind of flipped. There's a constant here, yes, but here you see r times n, r times n, the sign is flipped here, the sign is not flipped. So this is like a negative slope, this has a positive slope, um, but so they're, they're not in equation form, you know, they look like an r times n minus k, but the response could look drastically different. So if you were to, if you were to plot this, if you were to plot this response, um, it would be like something that looks like this, negative, right? If you were to plot this response, it looks like this. This is um, y as a function of n, right? And this is uh, y as a function of so n. So remember that these are approximations, linear approximations of this nonlinear equation at certain operating points or at certain equilibrium points. And the further we move away, from these equilibrium points, the more error we incur in our approximation. If you like this video on linear approximation examples, hit the thumbs up button. Also, leave a comment down below and tell me what kind of examples would you like to see based on the videos that I have already. While you're there, think about subscribing to Endless Engineering and hitting the bell. That way, YouTube will send you a notification every time we have a new video. Thanks for watching.